Absolute pleasure. OMG. Uh, I swear, technology. I literally press unmute. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Oh my gosh. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Jamie D Show. Woo! Live on KSHP AM 1400 at 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and live on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of Elgin in the Chicagoland area. We're also live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at The Jamie D Show. That's spelled T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. Y'all, I literally pressed unmute. <laughs> and I clicked my little mic like, nope, we're good. <sighs> the struggles like tech technology. Anyway, welcome in for today's show rundown. We're going to go over some daily news, and then we're going to have a conversation about having multiple sources of income. So I want you guys to stick around because, like I always say, these social topics pertain to somebody. So I need y'all to like, comment, share, and send this link out to your friends, family, and loved ones so that you can support the Jimmy D Show. All right. So Usher performed for free at the Super Bowl, and Joe Pompolino educated the people who saw his tweet on why he did so. The Super Bowl happened this past Sunday. It's only Tuesday, and everyone is still talking about Usher. They're still talking about the performances. They're still dissecting things they saw that was like, oh, I didn't catch that at first, and now everyone's talking about it again, or, you know, he's having all these streams, or he's making this much money even though he did it for free. And I want to actually go over what I saw Joe Pompolino write on Twitter because I thought it was very resourceful in understanding why artists, especially big artists like Usher, Beyonce, Michael Jackson, and more decide to perform at the Super Bowl, even though they deserve all of the money that they should be getting paid. And so let's read this together. So Joe Pompolino says, Apple Music pays the NFL $50 million annually to sponsor the Super Bowl halftime show, but Usher won't get any of that money. Instead, he'll perform for free, leveraging the exposure to gain followers, sell tickets, and increase streaming numbers. Here's how it works. Now, before I get into it, I want to say this. As somebody who works in the entertainment industry, that whole working for exposure stuff is a complete irritation. Like, I mean, immediate irritation. Because, like, no, pay me. Pay me what I deserve. And I think it's also dumb. However, you can't speak for everything. And sometimes it may work. And apparently in this situation, it's worth it to work for exposure. So let's read why. It says, one, some of the world's most famous artists have performed at the Super Bowl. Prince, Michael Jackson, Bruce Springsteen, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, the Rolling Stones, Rihanna. But none of these artists were paid. Number two, here's how the financials work. NFL signs a $50 million sponsorship deal. Artists gets a $15 million production budget. The budget covers 2,000 to 3,000 part-time workers, including set design, security, dancers, and marketing. But artists don't get any of that money. Three, in fact, some artists end up spending millions of dollars of their own money on the performance. The Weeknd, for instance, spent $7 million of personal cast on a show at Super Bowl 55, and Dr. Dre reportedly spent a similar amount in 2022. So why do they do it? Simple reason, exposure. Number four, the Super Bowl is watched by 115 million people. Brands will spend $7 million for 30-second commercials during this year's game. Yet Usher received an, uh, Usher received an uninterrupted 13-minute commercial for free. That is more valuable than its performance fee, and the data backs it up. Five, Justin Timberlake saw a 534% increase in music sales after Super Bowl 52. Trevor Scott's performance fee doubled from 500,000 to 1 million after Super Bowl 53. Jennifer Lopez and Shakira gained 3 million Instagram follower, followers after Super Bowl 54. Six, Rihanna's numbers were mind blowing too. Number one most streamed artist globally, 17 songs in the top 40 on Spotify, gained 3 million Instagram followers, and Fenty Beauty searches were up 833%. Rihanna's performance had more views. 118 million than the game, 115 million. Number seven. So it's no surprise Usher has a few tricks up his sleeves, which we saw on Sunday. Usher released his new album, and you know he hoped that his performance would push his songs in the charts, which we have seen worked. On top of that, his songs are trending on many different social platforms. He also signed a several endorsement, he also signed several endorsement deals and will even be in a commercial. Eight. But Usher's big play is promoting his upcoming tour, which everybody is talking about. 
StubHub says artists see a 50% increase in concert ticket searches, searches after performing at the Super Bowl, and The weekend sold 1 million tickets after his performance. That's why Usher announced a 24-city arena tour. And number nine, this creates a win-win situation. The NFL gets one of the world's top artists to perform at its biggest event for free, and the musician gets a 13-minute commercial in front of 115 million people for a fraction of what brands pay. That's why artists agree to do the halftime performance for free. And hey, if you ever came to me and said, here is the data, here's how we can prove that working for us for free will be beneficial for you, then I would do it. But a lot of times people aren't doing that. <laughs> and a lot of times people don't have the reach like the NFL and Apple Music and the Super Bowl halftime show. So Unless you're the Super Bowl halftime show and you, and you have money and resources and data like these companies, pay us. Pay us. <laughs> but other than that, congratulations, Usher, because everything that they said that would happen for him actually happened. And it proved that him doing this Super Bowl halftime performance for free actually put more money in his pocket. And that is something I can get behind. All right, y'all, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have some more daily news. So don't go anywhere. This is the Jamie D Show live on KSHP out of Las Vegas and live on WRMN out of Elgin in the Chicagoland area. I'll be right back. In the middle of the night, everything will be all right if you live coast right here on WRMN, seven days a week from midnight to 5 a.m. Each night on Coast to Coast, listeners are captivated by George Nuri with discussions on news and current events, conspiracy theories, UFOs, life after death, and all things curious and unexplained. Coast to Coast, every night, midnight to 5 a.m. right here on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM. Taqueria Las Cumbres, Crystal Lake's authentic Mexican restaurant on Grant Street is open for carryout. For over 15 years, Taqueria Las Cumbres has been serving up all of your favorite Mexican dishes and doing it better than the rest. Recently voted the best in McHenry County. Stop in and carry out the authentic taste of Mexico and see for yourself. Support local for lunch and dinner today and place an order from Taqueria Las Cumbres. Call 815-455-8200 for Taqueria Las Cumbres of downtown Crystal Lake. In the middle of the night, everything will be all right if you listen to Coast to Coast right here on WRMN seven days a week from midnight to 5 a.m. Each night on Coast to Coast, listeners are captivated by George Newry with discussions on news and current events, conspiracy theories, UFOs, life after death, and all things curious and unexplained. Whether you're working third shift or you're just a night owl, catch the most listened to overnight talk radio program in North America, Coast to Coast, every night, midnight to 5 a.m. right here on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM. For local information and fun times in the mornings, listen to Marky B and Larry Jones on the first shift. Maybe we need to get a radio intern in to help you. Maybe so. Somebody that you won't have to pay and you can treat them tough. I can haze them. You can't haze. You'll get fired. (laughs) Remember that guy from Northwestern? Yeah. Gone. Did he really do it? You don't have to really do it. If somebody says you did, good enough. Maybe I'm going to accuse you of hazing me. I don't have to prove it. (laughs) It's the first shift. Weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. right here on WRMN. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Jamie D Show. Woo! Live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and live on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of Elgin in the Chicago land area. Welcome back. If you're just now tuning in, we're going over some daily news. Also, I want to shout out Kara, I want to shout out Anderson. I want to shout out Robin. We got everybody live in the chat coming in. I really, really appreciate you. Anderson T. Hall says, let's get into this Usher Alicia Alicia Keys hug. Let me tell you. <laughs> we actually went in on that yesterday. You missed out on that. But yeah, like I said, it's all part of performing. If you're an artist, you understand you have to perform. Sometimes with the simulate central scenes, hugging, kissing, sex scenes, and more. It's a part of the industry. And I think people should just get over it. <laughs> I think people should just get over it. 
they know what they're doing. They talk to their husbands and their spouses and their wives and their partners and all that other stuff about what they're going to be doing on stage or on camera. So I think we make too much of a big deal about things that these artists know they're going to be doing regardless. So, hey, it is what it is to me. <laughs> As reported by The Neighborhood Talk. A California elementary school teacher is currently on administrative leave after she conducted an unauthorized active shooter drill that has reportedly traumatized students, teachers, and parents. According to KTLA, Nina Denson, principal of Washington Elementary in San Gabriel, California, decided to hold an active shooter drill at her school to get them prepared in case of an emergency. Though her thoughts might have been in the right place, the drill took a dark turn quickly. During the drill, Denson was reportedly walking around the school fake shooting at children, mimicking a gun with her finger. She was also reportedly banging on windows to give a more realistic effect. Denson also reportedly told a student, boom, you're dead. One parent, Jennifer Chavez, says her son is traumatized. Quote, oh, he really was upset, end quote, Chavez said of her son, who was in first grade. Quote, the one shocking, surprising thing he said as a six-year-old was, I'm really just glad none of my friends died, end quote. Shockingly, after the drill, Denson announced to the school that seven kids were dead. Can you imagine the trauma these children potentially could be going through just thinking, oh, my God, my friend was killed or was shot and told I died, said Anna Bustamante, a parent. At the young age of at these children are, it is very upsetting. The district announced that Denson's drill was unauthorized and she would be placed on administrative leave. Despite this, parents say they don't want Denson back at all, saying that she has lost the trust of the community. Take a listen to this report. Her witnesses say she held a disturbing active shooter safety drill at a San Gabriel Elementary School. The superintendent says the drill was not authorized and now an investigation is underway. KTLA Sandra Mitchell reports from San Gabriel where she spoke with concerned parents about the drill they say left children traumatized. Yeah, wait until you hear what happened. Parents tell us the principal at this elementary school pointed her fingers at young children and pretended to shoot them. She just became principal here at Washington Elementary back in the fall, and now it appears her job is in jeopardy. Dismissal time at Washington Elementary in San Gabriel. Children and parents upset by what the school principal did during a lockdown drill. She proceeded to walk around the campus and pretend to shoot people she saw using finger movements and banging on the window. Um, from what I heard, one of the students was told, boom, you're dead. Children as young as four years old. He was really upset. Witnessed the ordeal, including Jennifer Chavez's first grade son. The one shocking, surprising thing he said as a six-year-old was, I'm just really glad none of my friends died. Now the principal at the school, Dr. Nina Denson, has been put on leave. Was this drill approved by the district? No, it wasn't. This type of drill where a scenario was run um, is not approved by the district or part of our uh, district protocol. The superintendent confirmed to KTLA that the drill did happen yesterday. And then staff members say the principal made an announcement that seven children were dead. Oh, my God. Can you imagine the trauma these children? potentially could go through of just thinking, oh my God, my friend was killed or I was shot and told I died um, at this age, the young age that these children are. It was very upsetting. The district sent an email to parents stating the conduct of the drill does not appear to have been in line with district protocols or best practices. There is an investigation underway, but some parents have already made up their mind. I don't want her to be back here at all. She does not have the trust about the community. Obviously, staff members also very upset by what happened yesterday. We are told there were counselors here on campus today for those staff members and for the students. And just a little while ago, an email went out to parents, an update telling them that a lead teacher here at the school with almost 20 years experience in the district will be taking over as interim principal. In San Gabriel, I'm Sandra Mitchell, KTLA 5 News. Mm, mm, mm. When I say this was such a weird situation, not just disgusting, not horrendous, not like, oh, my God, you're dumb. Weird, weird, because why would she even think to do this? I understand getting children ready to handle any situation, but that takes training. That takes preparation. That takes community support. That takes the kids knowing what's going to happen. I have worked in schools before and I've had to go through potential shooter 
trainings and it's not something you take lightly it's not something you just do automatically it's not something you just say hey yeah boom you're dead how did that feel like no <laughs> there's steps you have to take to make sure that everyone's gonna feel comfortable everyone knows what's actually happening and people are okay with participating things of that nature are very traumatizing and i i, I don't understand why this teacher decided that on her first job getting hired here that she was going to do something like that like ugh. And, and you want to say things like, I can understand that probably came from the heart and she was trying to do the right thing because we do live in a world where school shootings are extremely common. So she was probably just trying to protect the kids. But if that was the case, she did it the wrong way. That was we not, wasn't even just dumb. That was just weird. That was weird. Like <laughs> you want to say things like, again, like dumb, disgusting, horrible, but that was honestly weird. What made you think that that was going to be okay? And on top of that, not to get the parents involved. These are people's kids. You don't play with people's kids like that. You just don't. You don't you don't involve kids who cannot consent themselves into things their parents didn't even consent for them to do. No. Like Robin B Robin B says it was poor judgment. And I completely agree. And I understand why these kids and parents probably don't want their children to be around this principal anymore. Probably don't want this principal to be in a principal anymore because like the parents said, they lost their trust. They did. And I, I agree uh, that that situation was just stupid. It was, it was just stupid. All right, let's move on to some more daily news because I don't want to sit here and talk about how weird people are <laughs> all day. Cause it's like, when you, when you look at the news, especially somebody like somebody like me who has to get the show run down ready every day, you're just like, Oh my God, people are really stupid. <laughs> Thousands of ride hailing and delivery drivers will strike across the United States on Wednesday to demand their wages. Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash drivers will demonstrate outside of airports in 10 cities, including Chicago. The Justice for App Workers Coalition announced Monday. Ride hailing drivers will rally at the O'Hare International Airport rideshare waiting lot between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Wednesday, the coalition said. They will also shut off their apps and will not accept any rides to and from the airport this upcoming Wednesday. Quote, we're sick of working 80 hours a week just to make ends meet, being constantly scared of our safety, scared for our safety, and worrying about being deactivated with the click of a button, the coalition said in a statement. Uber and Lyft did not immediately respond to requests for comment. In late January, the Chicago Police Department warned delivery drivers after three armed robberies occurred on the same west side block. Groups that advocate for gig workers in the city have called for additional safety measures after recent attacks, some of them which have been fatal, against delivery and ride-hailing drivers. In January, a ride-hailing driver was critically wounded in an attempted carjacking in the 900, 900 block of North LeClaire Avenue in Austin, police said. In December, Lyft driver Adriana Orcho Duki was fatally shot in the 400. 4,800 block of West Thomas Street in the same neighborhood. Another driver was killed in a shooting weeks earlier. Mohammed al Hajjaj was driving his black 2017 Cadillac Escalade ESV with four passengers in the 1700 block of North Lotus Avenue about 5.40 p.m. on December 3rd when someone opened fire. And to me, that's of extreme concern. I even have a friend here who came to my turn trivia nights that I have every Wednesday, every Thursday, excuse me, at the TGI Fridays in Schaumburg. And she told me that she was doing DoorDash and somebody ordered just one single cranberry juice at like nine or eight, eight or nine o'clock. Just one simple cranberry juice. And she thought nothing of it at first. Picked up the, picked the actual, like she accepted the actual um, request. Went to go pick up the cranberry juice and then went to the, lo the location, which wasn't a house, which was an abandoned school. And there were three cars in a, like next to each other waiting at the drop off location. So she said she didn't feel comfortable and she kept driving because she understood that something was wrong. And that person kept bothering her like, hey, you drove past us. I just saw you were in these cars. And she's like. Absolutely not. I'm not about to stop and give you one single cranberry juice when you guys are all in your cars. Why would you order DoorDash when you can just use the car that you're in to go around the corner and get your cranberry juice? She was like, I'm not stupid. And so she declined the, <laughs> the ride, well, the, the request, and she said she actually drank the cranberry juice. <laughs> but I'm glad she, she was safe because this stuff is really happening, not just in Chicago, but all over. And on top of that, she said she didn't even know that these situations were happening until a week later when she saw it on the news that people were actually luring in 
Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, and door dashers to not only harm them, steal from them, but also kill them. And that's an extremely scary reality. All right, y'all, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have a new segment. And this segment is going to be all about having multiple sources of income. Yes, that's our social topic of the day, having multiple sources of income. So stick around. This is the Jimmy D Show live on KSHP out of Las Vegas and live on WRMN out of the Elgin and the Chicagoland area. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. A dream that's been cooking for years, Maria's Little Italy in Sycamore is waiting for you to come and enjoy authentic recipes handed down for generations. Stop in and enjoy bruschetta, handmade focaccia bread, pizza, pasta, sandwiches, and more. Dine in, takeout, delivery, or catering is all available. Go to mariaslittleitaly.com and see what you've been missing. From their family to yours, welcome to Maria's Little Italy, where food brings families together. Keeping your car's coolant system in good shape with a regular flush is really important. Let the experts at Meineke Car Care Center at 376 Sundown Road in South Elgin remove your old coolant, preventing chemical buildups in your engine. Then they'll fill your entire system with new coolant to help your engine run smoothly and prevent rust and corrosion, increasing your engine's lifespan. To schedule your appointment, call 847-888-9644. Listen to The First Shift weekday mornings for fashion tips with Mark and Larry. You can wear shorts and knee pads. Well, I think that's odd. <laughs> but I guess <laughs> And like, long socks. Yeah. Like they did like, in the 70s so, in the NBA. Remember that? They all did. They had those socks pulled way up. Yeah. They had those shorts now that if you wear them, people call the police on you because they would think you're some kind of a pervert. <laughs> isn't, I mean, isn't that weird? I know. It's weird that we thought that was cool back in the day. But yeah. It's The First Shift weekday mornings from 6 to 10 a.m. right here on WRMN. Get a head start to the week by listening to Sunday Nights with Bill Cunningham from 9 p.m. to midnight. Bill Cunningham is a nationally recognized radio and television host, veteran attorney, and business entrepreneur. Bill has forged a reputation as someone who is not shy about expressing an opinion or holding someone accountable. Cunningham has served as the uncommon voice of the common man. Sunday Nights with Bill Cunningham, beginning at 9 p.m. on Sundays, right here on WRMN, AM 1410 and 96.7 FM. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Jamie D Show. Woo! Live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and live on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 12, 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of the Elgin in the Chicago land area. Y'all, okay, let's talk about this real quick. <laughs> the amount of times I have to say this and I still sometimes mess up is insane to me. <laughs> I'm going to get it right, y'all. Well, I mean, I got it right several thousand times, but I'm going to continue to get it right. Jeez. Okay. If you're just not tuning in, I already went over some daily news. And now we're going to have a conversation about having multiple sources of income. But before we get into that, I want to shout out Cinnamon. She said something on the YouTube that I want to bring up. She says, okay, so now my question is, when is the district going to create a proper drill for administrators to practice for serious situations? I think that principal was damned if she did and damned if she didn't. And I agree. However, like I said in my previous news segment, it's not about doing the drill. It's about how she improperly did the drill. It's about how she did not involve her the parents. She did not really involve the kids beforehand. And there was no proper time frame for when this was going to be done. It was just, and it wasn't even authorized. It was just done. And, and to do something like that, I understand that the situations are very unexpected. You can't plan when an act of shooting is actually going to happen, but you shouldn't simulate a situation that we all know around the world is so traumatic and that we deal with day in and day out, especially living in America. You shouldn't do that without getting everyone involved and having every everybody understand that it's just a drill, especially these little kids. Because like, you, like the people said, some of them thought that they actually died, even though they were alive and speaking. <laughs> you have to remember, these are little kids and they take what you say serious take it very serious so you, you can't just do things with kids and expect them to understand what just happened you have to sit down have these conversations 
and truly plan these things out. You can't just do it. You just can't. All right, let's get back into this social topic of the day. What's up, Kendra? I see you. Having multiple sources of, in of income. Listen, friends, family, loved ones, <laughs> supporters of my live radio show, haters who just watch and listen to keep tabs on me and more. I know some of y'all in all categories may look at me like, bruh, huh? After I say this, but I also know more people would agree with me than those who will look at me sideways. And that's all that matters. So let me fix myself. <clears throat> I want you guys to hear me loud and clear. Having multiple sources of income, aka having multiple jobs, side hustles, or whatever it is you want to call it, is ghetto. I said what I said. You heard what I said. Having to work all these dang jobs just to make ends meet make more money to cover extra expenses that arise or make more money so you can afford extra things outside of your bills like vacations and other luxuries is dumb. I said what I said. Having to extend yourself and work, 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 like Rihanna said, is not the life for me and shouldn't be the life for other people either. I believe that our primary jobs, especially those who go out and get degrees and work what we call big boy slash big boy girl jobs should be getting paid more than enough to survive and thrive. I'm going to say it again for those in the back who didn't hear me. I believe that our primary jobs, especially for those who go out and get degrees and work what we call big boy slash big girl jobs, should be getting paid more than enough to survive and thrive. I know so many people out there who aren't getting what they deserve, but accepting it so they can at least have some source of income. So they could say they have some type of job. And so they could have a placeholder to get them by into the job they want and will actually pay them comes up. And that's dumb. That's dumb. And so since they're in that predicament, they go out and work other jobs just to have extra money to spend. And to me, that is a horrible way to live. This is not to talk about people who purposely go out and get other jobs on top of their full-time jobs and make that extra money, even though they're already getting paid more than enough, or to even talk about those side hustles that you can make in your sleep, but to be very honest, are very hard to make happen, and for some reason, it's impossible to actually get the money you need to be sleep and not worry about it and get paid enough. But this is to talk about the countless Americans who are being forced into this new way of living just to prevent and escape poverty. The way we have to live, survive, and thrive in today's world is ridiculous. I've said this before. We live in a made-up world with these made-up concepts, and a lot of the issues we deal with are placed upon us by the people in power, and it's stupid. I understand that we have some that we have to have. I understand that we have to have some type of structure so we don't run out of resources due to population increase and need. But from what we see in the news day in and day out. And even just from living and driving around and being in the world, we have more than enough resources to go around, but we aren't even using those resources wisely. Again, we have more than enough resources to go around, but we are not using those resources wisely. Yet, inflation gets placed around America wisely, and we just have to deal with it. But yeah, that sounds practical. You know, I'm going to say it again. Inflation gets placed wisely, and we have to deal with that. And that's practical. That makes sense. The world has gotten so crazy that people are doing crazy stuff like working 11 full-time jobs at the same time. Yes, you heard what I just said. People are working 11 full-time jobs at once. To me, that just that's just dumb and overkill. And that doesn't even sound right. But the stakes are high and we have to hustle to get it. So people are just doing it. And people are doing the darn most, like having 11 jobs. And people are feeling as though that they have to go that far because they feel the need to, to survive, to thrive, and, and to be better off and leave money for their family. The concept of working more than one job and trying to make ends meet or more money is called being overemployed. And I never even heard of that word until I brought this topic up and started doing my own research. Whenever I bring up social, social topics, I don't just say, okay, I'm going to talk about this topic and use my own personal experiences. I talk about the topic, give my opinion, use personal experiences, and bring up data and statistics, even videos. And I was like, oh, that's a concept? Being overemployed? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And when I read this and watched the videos, I was like, this is weird. So let's watch this report by NBC News where they discuss the concept of being overemployed and what lens some people go to just to make money. 
All right, we are all about original reporting here, and in today's original in-depth reporting on a topic we've been keeping an eye on, we've been talking about inflation, of course, and how it's affecting families' bottom line across the country. But for many, their wages are not keeping up with the rising costs of everyday necessities, everything. But some folks are taking advantage of remote schedules to increase the amount that they bring in, and we're not talking about raises. Instead, they're working, working multiple jobs. It's called being overemployed. NBC's Issa Gutierrez has more. The recent rise in remote work is arguably one of the largest business culture shifts since the advent of the five-day work week in 1932. According to a June McKinsey survey, there's now an estimated 29 million Americans opting to work remote five days a week. And some savvy remote workers are using the time they save commuting to get hired for more than one full-time job. They call themselves overemployed. My gross between all the companies, it kind of varies based on bonuses, but it's approximately $1.5 million depending on the year. So I figured the more jobs I had, the closer I would get to retirement. Tyler, who asked us to use an alias and alter his voice, says he's been overemployed for nearly a decade. He first started with just two jobs. One company was remote, so I would have to go to like the bathroom whenever I wanted to take a call for one company. But just over time, it you know, I ended up making it work. Then came the pandemic and a shift to remote work culture. The companies I was working for, they were pretty happy with my work. So I just kind of kept adding more and more jobs over time until I got to 11. Tyler shared 11 of his most recent pay stubs with NBC News for 11 separate full-time jobs. And we can confirm that each company is real. The companies he works for are based across 10 different states. I have a laptop for each company and three main monitors that I use. If you're not good at stress, then definitely you do not want to be overemployed because it can be very, very stressful. Overemployment has only recently come under the spotlight, but the idea isn't entirely new. This is the biggest open secret out there. Isaac, who altered his voice for this interview to conceal his identity, runs overemployed.com. It's a website that gives tips on how to juggle more than one job concurrently. He says the movement has been happening in the tech sector for years and goes back even beyond that. The whole industrial military complex built in this norms of working one job long before then. It wasn't just one job. Uh, when you were farming or being uh, doing carpentry, people were doing multiple jobs, surviving, basically. That's the basis of the website and why it was created was basically give other people the permission and the okay to, to pursue life, liberty, and happiness for themselves. For most workers, this is perfectly legal. It would depend on the worker's contract. Aaron Hatton is a sociology professor at the University of Buffalo that focuses on labor market and movements. Most employees work at will, which means that their employer can fire them for any reason at all, any time at all, except for a few legally protected reasons. But if you're a great worker and they find out you're working for another employer and they don't like it, they can let you go today. This is just one of the hurdles overemployed people face. The biggest slip up that I've had is basically I'll forget to mute one job when I am on a meeting with multiple companies. But as work culture continues to evolve, for some, the idea of going back to their normal nine to five is out of the question. So I would quit every job before I go back to an office. The only thing that they should really care about is are you doing your work? As long as you're productive, I think that's you know what matters the most. Isa Gutierrez, NBC News. I'm going to just say this, 11 jobs, How? not even just 11 jobs, but 11 full-time jobs. When I tell you that, I was like, huh? Huh? You have three computer screens. You're muting one job just to be in another job, Zoom call. I, <laughs> I get it. We got to make money, but some things are just ridiculous. And that man is doing too much. And... Mm, like, I have friends who actually do have two to three remote jobs, and I, I don't know why they're doing it or how they're doing it. And I don't even feel like being stressed out like them, but they're doing it, and they're making ends meet, and, and, and they're living a little bit better than me. But is it worth it? You know, is, is it worth it to go through all of that? And to me, it's not. It's just not. And to feel the need to have to go those lengths to get money is uh, sad. It really is sad. Being overemployed. Absolutely not. I mean, it's better than being underemployed. But like the lady said on the news report, 
these jobs are starting to figure out what people are doing and you will get fired. You will get caught. And let's be honest, word does get around. You don't want to mess it up, not only for yourself, but for others. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, y'all, we're going to have a conversation more about having multiple income. So don't go anywhere. This is the Jamie D Show live on KSHP out of Las Vegas and live on WRMN out of the Elgin in the Chicago Land area. I'll be right back. WRMN says thank you to all of our local veterans like Jerry Christofferson of True Patriots Care. We had the 1,700 flags up across from the wall. That's how many POWs and MIAs from Vietnam are still missing. Plus, we do veterans and first responders funerals. Yeah. And uh, so if you ever drive by a funeral home or a church or a cemetery and you see the flags, you know a, a soldier died today. Go to truepatriotscare.com for more information. And veterans, thank you for your service to our country. Listen this Sunday afternoon to Handle on the Law. Let me tell you what I would do, okay? This is not a legal issue. This is a handle issue. He says, mm -hmm. have a blessed day. You reply with, may you rot in hell and just stay there. And he goes, have a blessed day. And you go, you rot in hell. And you see who gives up first. <laughs> okay. Play chicken with the guy. That's what I would do. It's Handle on the Law this Sunday afternoon from 4 to 7 right here on WRMN. On WRMN, we highlight people who are trying to make a difference locally, like Marcus Banner, who talks about taking life to the next level. I believe a man should better himself, better his family, they better our community, and then we better government, and in that order. And then eventually you elevate yourself and evolve into a space where you're working on all of those things simultaneously because there is no finish line to any of that. It's always a continuous work. Making a difference in the local community for 75 years. We are WRMN. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Jamie D Show. Woo! Live on KSHP out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and live on WRMN out of Elgin in the Chicago land area. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. If you're just now tuning in, I already went over some daily news, and now we're having a conversation about having multiple sources of income. I want to remind you all that if you want to promote your business, products, services, music, podcasts, and more, because you have multiple sources of income, hit us up. <laughs> Hit us up at info at jamied.com. That's I N F O at J A I M E D E E.com. And let's get your business growing, your product going, growing, your podcast growing, or whatever it is. Let us help you. All right. So I want to actually mention what was said on YouTube. Oh, 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 hold on. I think my, yep, my whole thing system just froze. I don't know why it froze, but we're going to keep this going. Um, so what I read on YouTube was that Robin B stated that she had three jobs and she couldn't talk because those three jobs were helping her get out of debt. And because of those three jobs were helping her get out of debt, it was totally worth what she had to do. And Robin, I understand. I, I, I get it. And if that's what you had to do to make ends meet, that's what you had to do to get by, then more power to you. You should do exactly what you need to do to make it out. But to feel the need to have to is horrible. I want better for our world and our people because working your life away is a disgusting concept and a sad reality that most people live in. There are countless people who are working until the day they die, and that is not the future I look forward to. There isn't even enough time in the day to work one full-time job, let alone a full-time job and a part-time job, and still live a prosperous, fun, and healthy personal life. We should be able to live our lives to the fullest. We should be able to be able to experience the many wonders of the world. We should be able to handle balancing work and personal life. But that is a reality that many people don't get to live in. On top of that, and even if people get lucky enough to find one job that pays them more than enough to do and get everything they want in their personal life, they have to sacrifice their mental, physical, and emotional well-being to get that money. So by the time they're done working, they don't even have the capacity to live out their personal life. And to me, that is still horrible. It's like you can't live for losing. You can't win for losing. Yeah, if you do a quick Google search about the benefits of working more than one job to receive an extra source of income, it all sounds great. You get, and per that research, you get new skills, income increases, extra benefits, career advancement, income diversification, and more. But is that worth all the hidden costs that come from working more than one job? Learn Friend YouTube has a video that we're about to watch that details the cost of working multiple jobs because I truly want us to stop glorifying 
working our lives away just because it means we're getting more money. We need to focus on the real fight, and that's fighting for more than livable wages, having a real work-life balance so that we can actually enjoy life outside of work and not having to work until we die. Here is what they had to say. If you're thinking about working multiple jobs, you're probably already aware of some of the benefits. Making more money, learning some new skills, maybe even exploring a new career path. While all of these are great, it's important to keep in mind that there are some hidden costs involved as well. Multiple jobs means multiple schedules. You'll need to successfully balance these, and that can be difficult. If you're not organized, it can get stressful and you may end up losing one or more of your jobs. If you work two jobs in one day, your employers will also need to know your availability. You'll have to make sure your schedules don't overlap and that you have enough time to get from one job to another. And if you need to take time off for any reason, you'll need to coordinate this with all of your employers. Another hidden cost is trying to maintain a healthy work-life balance. The more time you spend at work, the less time you have to devote to things like your family, relationships, hobbies, and more. So before you pick up another job, you're going to want to weigh its benefits against the time that it'll take up. You'll probably want to talk about this with your family or significant other because it'll impact them too. Working a lot of hours can also be a big source of stress. If you get too burned out, it can take a toll on your work performance and possibly affect your health. Losing sleep, getting sick, or just having an overall bad mood are a few ways it could negatively impact you. If you feel like multiple workloads would be too much to handle, you might want to reconsider having another job. While working several jobs is a great way to make more money, it can also create extra expenses. You'll need to pay for transportation between jobs, and you may end up eating out more since you'll have less time to prepare meals. And if you have kids, and you or your family can't be with them, you'll need to pay for childcare. We realize all of this sounds pretty negative, but don't let it discourage you. These are just some things to think about before making a final decision. You might find that you're able to handle the effects of working multiple jobs. In the end, it's entirely up to you and really depends on your own personal circumstances. <laughs> I'm screaming at these comments. Natural Radiance says, cause sis is tired. I am sis. Something's got to give. Kendra says, because baby, I'm tired. And I understand. I completely get it. As someone who has worked multiple jobs his entire life, I've never seen the appeal of having to work several jobs at once. It's one thing to want to do it. It's one thing to have an amazing job that pays you what you deserve and you get booked for other jobs outside of what you do because of your profession and you enjoy doing that. But it's another thing to have to do it, to get by. I really want us to be able to enjoy life, travel, luxury. I want, I want us to enjoy life. I want us to enjoy love, traveling, luxury, family, friends, hobbies, and more, and not work. And maybe those things. I'm going to say it again. I want us to be able to enjoy those things, not work, and maybe those things I mentioned. Yeah, we need to be productive citizens who contribute to society, but not citizens who only contribute to society and have no time for anything else. I just want the world to get better. And to do so, we have to remember to get involved in politics. We have to remember to call out people who are creating laws in our cities, in our towns, in our states. And we have to remember to vote. Please remember to vote. If we're going to complain about it, we have to also be working towards a solution. All right? Y'all, this has been the Jamie D Show. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for always supporting me. Hey, if you want to promote your business, products, services, music, podcast and more hit us up at info at jamied.com i love you guys so much it's kshp in las vegas wrmn and elgin in the chicago land area i love you guys so much peace out y'all i'll see y'all tomorrow